In a recent video, we covered how an Angular application, optionally using Ionic for UI components, can be built as a native iOS or Android application. The definition of what is native, as we touched on last time, I think will forever be ambiguous and confusing. So let's just quickly recap specifically how the capacitor approach works generally. Capacitor will create what is a normal native iOS or Android application for us. It will also embed a native web view control into that application and then load your Angular application into that web view. It also has a mechanism for passing data between the web view and the other parts of the application. The key difference to a standard native application is that it is Angular and the embedded web view that are primarily responsible here for rendering the UI of your application rather than individual native UI controls. But it's not uncommon for standard native applications to also use a web view for parts of the UI. And it's also not uncommon in capacitor applications to directly write native code and to use native UI controls along with the web view. So at least in my opinion, the line between these two approaches is much more blurry and gray than simply native and not native. So in this video, we are going to look at how for an Angular and Capacitor application, we can make direct modifications to a native iOS project that Capacitor creates for us. Similar concepts apply for Android as well, but I'm just going to focus on iOS for this one. With Capacitor, you do have full access to the entire native project and can quite literally do whatever you want to it. But we'll focus on making a couple of plugins that integrate with the Angular application in the web view. We will write some native code to retrieve a photo from the native file system and then display that in the Angular application. And we will also write some native code that displays a native list UI control to display data that we can launch from our Angular application. I've already gone ahead and done the basic capacitor setup steps. I have Xcode open to help me make modifications to the native iOS project that capacitor created for me. And I'll make changes to the Angular application through NeoVim. What I want to do now is add a button to the Angular application. And when I click that button, I want it to display the latest photo from the user's photo gallery within the Angular application. So to do that, I can come over to Xcode and create a new Swift file and then add whatever native code I need to do whatever it is I am trying to do. In this case, get a photo from the user's photo gallery. Now, since we will be accessing the user's photo data to achieve this, we will need to make sure that we come into the info section and add the appropriate permissions. This is a plugin I've written previously. And the basic idea is that I can just pass it an index and it will get me that photo from the user's photo gallery. For example, if I pass it zero, it will give me the latest photo. If I pass it one, it will give me the second latest and so on. Now this is mostly just normal native Swift code and frankly, I don't know Swift well at all. At the time, I pieced all this together from Google searches and today, of course, we could lean into AI for this. Whilst it's going to be easier if you do have some knowledge of Swift or Kotlin or whatever, I do think this is the exact sort of task AI is great for and can be done relatively safely. These are generally small, isolated tasks that achieve some simple, well-defined goal and the code you have in these sorts of plugins aren't going to impact the general architecture and maintainability of your application more broadly. There are some special capacitor parts here to take note of though. We have this section at the top that helps define the API for the bridge between our Angular application and the native code, where we supply the name of our plugin and the methods it provides. We can use this call to both get data from our Angular application that is being passed into the plugin, and we can also use call to pass data back to our Angular application, which is how we are passing the photo data back. Now for local plugins like this, where we are directly modifying the native project ourselves, there is one more plumbing step to complete. We need to register the plugins by creating a custom view controller. Just as we did before with the Swift plugin file, we will need to create another new file, but this time we will choose a Cocoa touch class and set subclass of to UI view controller. We can call the file my view controller and select the Swift language. Then we can open the Swift file and register any plugins we have created like this. In the capacitor did load function, we just call register plugin instance on whatever custom plugins we want to register. Now we will need to select the main storyboard file, expand the bridge view controller scene dropdown, 
select bridge view controller and then change the custom class from cap bridge view controller to your own custom my view controller which extends the default cap bridge view controller that handles the native side of things now on the angular side we just need to create an interface like this register the plugin and then we can import and use this plugin wherever we need I can complete my button functionality now, and I've also added some code to actually display the image we have retrieved within the Angular application. Now, if I deploy this application to my phone via Xcode, which will install the application in the same way any other native application is installed, we can see our Angular application that is running in the web view inside of our native application. I can click this button that will execute our native code, pass the result back to the Angular application, and then we can see the result. Of course, the user sees none of this behind the scenes process. To them, they just click the button and they see the photo. So just to quickly show you a different type of plugin we might create, I'm going to blast through creating a plugin that will allow me to launch a native UI list control. It's the exact same process. I'll create the plugin file, add my native code that will handle launching a normal native list control. And I want to highlight that this is a literal native UI control. This isn't a Angular list or anything like that. We can register the plugin, create the interface in the Angular application, and then I can import it and use it to display whatever data I want in a native list control. Now, if I launch the application and click this button, you can see that the native UI list control appears on top of the web view control, and then I can dismiss that to get back to the Angular application. But again, from a user perspective, there isn't any kind of obvious switching between native and non-native. It all just appears to be part of the same consistent UI. And I do quickly again want to highlight that I am in no way implying that there are no important differences between a standard native application and a capacitor application. There are many pros and cons and trade-offs to consider. But at least in my opinion, the line between these two approaches is much more blurry and gray than a simple native and not native which is why I think of capacitor applications as being native applications that use a web-based approach for the UI, or at least for some of the UI. And it's worth noting that capacitor has plenty of its own plugins available out of the box that cover a lot of the common scenarios, but it's useful to be able to build these yourself from scratch as well. If you found this video useful, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again soon.